Hi guys. Well, it is a pleasant, if not spectacularly gorgeous, right now it is a pleasant Friday. That would be January 28th, 2022 here at the uh, what's left of Crazy Crane Campground here in the Point Lonesome Swamp deep in the Oasis of Freedom. But since it is Friday, as I say, I think, are we at January 28th already, uh, 2022? So, uh, since it is Friday, doing what I do every day, and that is bringing you my least viewed video of the week, uh, which I think is the most important video I do every week, but there's a few people who want to listen to one thing that Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mongabay.com uh, have to say about <coughs> the imminent and ongoing collapse of the planet. So we're going to uh, skip the hopium and uh, just stick to reality. And so this is the last January 2022 edition of the uh, my ecological meltdown roundup rant there's a lot on the plate here so I'm gonna set the little dog down and uh this is a little bit of a departure from Manga Bay but I'm glad to see Rhett uh looking what the hell just happened oh no y y you know guys I'm telling you it uh <laughs> I love uh, the collapse of global industrial civilization. Uh, this computer, and I probably should just uh, start all this over again. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> apparently Rhett Butler is looking up, and we're going to talk about what might or might not be in the near future chemtrails. I have been saying for years that you can look forward to uh, solar radiation management, uh, whatever you want to call it. But this is how, what Rat has to say about it this week. <clears throat> Efforts to dim the sun and cool the earth must be blocked say scientists, yes, we need to block the efforts, not the sun. <clears throat> scientists are calling on political institutions, yes, right, to place limits on solar geoengineering research so that it cannot be deployed unilaterally by countries, companies, or even individuals. <clears throat> Long-term planetary-level geoengineering interventions of this kind are unprecedented and extremely dangerous, say the academics, uh, and should not, therefore, even be experimented with outdoors, receive patents, public funds, or international support. Solar Geoengineering's le leading proposal, injecting billions of aerosol particles into the Earth's stratosphere, could have severe, unintended, and unforeseen consequences. Modeling suggests that it may cause drying of the Amazon rainforest, like there's going to be anything left of the Amazon rainforest anyway. In addition, if solar geoengineering were deployed, it would need to be maintained for decades, not for decades, for eternity is how long it would need to be maintained for. Sudden discontinuance would, would result in Earth facing what scientists call termination shock with a sudden temperature rise due to existing atmospheric carbon emissions which would have been masked by the cooling stratospheric aerosols. Well, uh, that is the point. It is one more way that uh, global industrial civilization can go right on about business as usual. You know, just like uh, 
we, we, we're going to be sucking this carbon out of the air. We're going to be reflecting the sun uh, back out, uh, tweak this, tweak that. And it's business as usual. We can just keep on uh, pumping. Keep on pumping. All right. Let's see. What is going on uh, with Brazilian gold mining? Amazon to the Alps. Swiss gold imports from Brazil tread a legal minefield. <clears throat> the Brazilian Amazon is, is experiencing a new and potentially catastrophic gold rush driven by increased international demand for the precious metal. Over the past year alone, an estimated $1.2 billion worth of gold has been exported from Brazil to Switzerland, making Switzerland now the second largest export market for the country's gold after, and I was totally shocked by this, after Canada. Canada is the number one market for uh, Brazilian gold. Uh, according to official figures, about a fifth of this comes from the Amazon. Oh, yeah, right. 20% my ass. Um, the scale of Brazil's gold exports to Switzerland has raised concerns that a significant quantity of illicit gold from the Amazon may be entering global supply chains. Yes, now you have an enemy in the diamond business. I should have made this one uh, right after the, uh, the one on solar geoengineering because uh, it will certainly be part of this. I, I mentioned this, I think this was in the mainstream media that I, that I touched on uh, earlier this week, but this is Manga Bay's spin on it. <clears throat> not, not even counting dumping billions of, of all of these chemicals uh, into the stratosphere. We have breached Earth's threshold for chemical pollution. A new study has found that the release of novel entities, artificial chemicals, and other human-made pollutants, and this includes uh, plastics, has accelerated to a point that we have crossed a new planetary boundary threatening the entire Earth operating system along with humanity. The study authors argue that the breach of this critical planetary boundary has occurred because the rate at which novel entities, can you say solar geoengineering, are being developed and produced by industry exceeds government's ability to, ex to assess the risk and monitor the impacts, not counting the planet's risk uh, ability to absorb this stuff. Right now, it looks like there are about 350,000 different types of artificial chemicals currently on the international market with production of existing and newly synthetic chemicals set to substantially increase in the coming decades. Uh, while many of these substances have been shown to negatively affect the natural world and human health, the vast majority have yet to even be evaluated with their interactions, you know, with each other and impacts either poorly understood or completely unknown. All right, and if you want some more of that, let's go down to the Amazon jungle. Chemical defoliants 
are being sprayed on the Amazon rainforest to facilitate deforestation in Brazil. Chemicals used to kill agricultural pests, meaning uh, uh, meaning a lot uh, herbicides, not uh, so much insecticides, but herbicides is what we're talking about here. Chemicals created uh, to kill agricultural pests are being sprayed by aircraft into native rainforest areas. This is glyphosate, can you say, Roundup and 2,4-D, which I believe is the main ingredient in uh, Agent Orange. So it's basically Roundup and A Agent Orange, among others, cause the trees to defoliate and end up weakened or dead in a process that takes months. Next, criminals remove the remaining trees more easily and then drop grass seed by aircraft, consolidating deforestation. Um, in addition to land grabbers, cattle ranchers use the same method in order to circumvent forest monitoring efforts. You know, guys, I could stop the rant right here. Uh, we have already crossed, we have already crossed uh, the planetary boundary of all these chemicals. Uh, we are now spraying Roundup and Agent Orange all over primary Amazon rainforest out of airplanes, and it won't be long before we are purposefully spraying this shit out of airplanes uh, into the stratosphere. You know, guys, anyway, continuing with the, uh, with chronicling the collapse of a planet, as Rhett has been doing for the past 20 years. Now, here is this other, a, the newest story about the Western monarchs making this spectacular uh, recovery in California. I saw somebody in the comment section over there on Sandy's channel, you, you, you know, uh, cheering on the comeback of the uh, comeback of the Western monarchs. Uh, but what people are, uh, are forgetting about one more time, although this year's count is positive, the population has still plummeted from historic numbers. More than 1.2 million butterflies were recorded in California as recently as 1997. So, you know, compared to last year, this is great news. And that's is, you know, a lot of people uh, weren't even born in 1997. So they go and they look at all these butterflies and, and you know, and say that the Western monarchs, uh, this, this is called baseline, what's it called? Uh, there's some word for this. It's the same with the water birds in, uh, here in Florida. You know, my mother grew up here in Florida uh, and, and the, she moved here in 1926. So she was, when she was a kid here, Florida was blanketed by all of these wading birds. Then when I came along as a kid in the 1960s, what looked like a shitload uh, 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 of all of these wading birds to my mother from her childhood, they were a tiny fraction. And now when you drive around here, uh, if you see one wading bird uh, every 10 miles, it looks like a lot of wading birds. It's the baseline normalcy bias or something like that. 
Uh, but at least here at Crazy Crane, we, we do have more birds here at Crazy Crane Campground than you will find in Everglades National Park. But anyway, whether it's wading birds or monarch butterflies, pesticide and herbicide intensive agriculture, urban sprawl, pollution, and climate change have contributed to the global decline of insects, including monarchs. It is this whole, uh, don't forget 5G. Anyway, wading birds or butterflies, it's the same cast of suspects. It's too damn many people. Okay. Gee, you will not believe that a mining agreement in Liberia, uh, we have some broken promises. Hmm. Communities in Liberia have threatened to withdraw from an agreement they made with a mining company two years ago on the grounds that none of the promised benefits have materialized. Wow, and so this is a Swiss, Switzerland headquartered Solway mining uh, denies any wrongdoing. Hmm. Quote, Solway is a big disappointment. Yes, we don't see these schools and health centers they promised us. Imagine that. Okay. I think I remember reading that our Save the Planet president, Joe Biden, put the kibosh on that giant pebble mine in Alaska. And there's breaking news today on the mainstream media. Good for Joe Biden. The, the, the same day that I guess some uh, court overruled Biden the, yesterday on, uh, on drilling for oil on millions of acres at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico as part of his plans to reduce uh, fossil fuel extraction on our public lands. But Biden did, he put the kibosh on that big, I think it was a nickel mine up there in the Boundary Waters canoe area. Good for you, Biden. Put the kibosh, I think, on the pebble mine. So I'm, this is another mine. So it's like a whack-a-mole. It's like gold mine whack-a-mole. Wow, where have we heard this story before? Alaskan indigenous leaders fear impacts on salmon streams from mining project. Mining company Donlin Gold is seeking to develop one of the world's largest open pit gold mines near Alaska's Kuskowim River, a spawning ground for several species of salmon, which make up 50% of local communities' diet and subsistence lifestyle. Yes. Um, and, uh... And so here's where it gets tricky, okay? According to Donlin Gold Incorporated, native corporations have already approved of the mine and the best available technology will be utilized. Uh, tribal leaders argue native corporations agreed without consulting tribal governments and fear mercury contamination, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, this is exactly what I've been talking about uh, going on down there uh, in, in Latin America. This is true anywhere on the planet that uh, you do understand that a lot of these indigenous uh, people are 100% in favor of all of these uh, mining projects. Uh, who do you think they're hiring to work the mines? God damn it. Well, guys, it is raining. My phone is ringing. 
it is raining but good god i think we have enough already for a rant i might come back with a part two this is a 10 percent chance of rain so anyway bundle up is going to be 23 degrees here uh in florida tomorrow so uh get out there and stay warm while you still can i might come back with a part two but i think we've heard enough doom and gloom already bye guys